Go to tapjars.com to learn dreams, engage my services, and support the channel. Yeah, in some games, coins and stuff kind of float towards you. Like, once you're close enough to them, they'll just keep on zooming towards you until they get there. So, we're going to add that. So, we'll edit the original thing over here. And here's our coin. So, instead of uh, immediately picking it up like that, what I'm going to do is have a larger zone. So, when we're in, like, a larger range. Uh, so, I'll do that. And this is if the coin should chase the player. So we've got a tag called coin chase and up and down on the d-pad to use coin chase there and we want that to be a larger range maybe something like that. Once we're in this mode then we'll use a follower to follow the player. So um, this needs a tag, a uh, tag name down here so uh, Let's copy that tag out and just call it, move it somewhere useful and call it the player and now use up and down the d-pad on here and now it will follow to the player tag and we actually want this to follow from the center there like that so that it, it will move uh, instead of moving from like the center of the object down there it's from the center of the coin like that. Uh, and then, yeah, we don't want it to have this inner distance. We want it to go all the way to the tag. So let's put that to zero. So I'll just get close enough to it and it'll start following me. Um, but now it's kind of lost where I am because it's not within that zone again. So now it's just flying off into the distance. So instead, I'm going to kind of, instead of worrying about if I'm in that zone, once we're in that range, we will change and like have this follower on forever. So let's just have like, a, let's leave it off first and then we'll have a keyframe, turn it on. And that will do the same thing because as we had before, instead of wiring it straight in, we're wiring into here and that's wiring into there to turn it on. And then I'll make this keep changes so that even if we leave the, leave the area um, and the tag loses track of us, it'll leave this on. So now let's go close enough and now it's following. And now it doesn't, doesn't care if I'm too far away now, it'll just keep on running around. It will still have this uh, range as defined here, the max distance, and I'll make it smaller so you can see. So it has a max distance the follower can find the tag in, but it's kind of really big anyway, so that's fine. Yeah, and when it gets to us, it'll still, it'll still ding when it gets to us, so that's cool. Cool, they're kind of a bit slow and stuff, so maybe I'll speed it up. And uh, you can see it, it actually starts off slower and has to take a while to get up to speed. If we turn the strength down, you can see it even more pronounced. Yeah, it's just super slow because the strength is low. Uh, let's leave it there. So it kind of zoomed into us over time, got faster over time. Um, but if we want it to go full strength at this full speed immediately, we can just turn up the full, turn it up to full strength, and now it'll just zoom in as soon as we're in the range. Um, or we could like have this zoom up, uh, this this speed go up over time. So instead of turning on the follower uh, with this keyframe, I'm going to turn on an animation which kind of uh, does other things like animate the speed. So I'm going to use a timeline for that and put this follower in the timeline and we don't need to keyframe that anymore. If you select the keyframe and then press triangle on it, then it will forget the uh, settings it changed. Um, and instead of a keyframe, we can do this another way with a selector gadget in the logics and logic and processing category. And we get a selector 
and this is like having modes so we've got two modes starts off with a mode and that's not doing anything and then we'll put that into b mode and when the sensor signal into b mode it will be on that mode like forever and send a signal out over here so we can use that to power our timeline and which will in turn power the follower on it and I'll extend that like that and then drag this end so that it kind of cuts it off. So what this does is, so if I have a switch going into the timeline and then I power it, it will be activating the follower. And then when it gets to the end, because this is kind of cutting into it, that means that um, it will keep powering this. But if it was like perfectly aligned or something like that, then it will get to the end and it will stop powering it because it's not like hanging off the edge. So then you just drag the end and drag it further than you need, and then it will stay on. So that's what we want. Uh, let's put it back in here. And I will keyframe the speed of this. So we'll have it at a low speed first. And then I'll keyframe the speed up to ludicrous speed. And then I'll scale it up with up on the d-pad and then just drag the, out the edges and stuff and then i can use this um this fader handle to say um apply this more and more over time so over here you can see it's still at a low speed and over here it will be at that ludicrous speed but let's try it when i'm kind of running away oh i couldn't even run away from it so that's kind of what you want. You don't want it to be able to, um, let's just slow down, let's just slow down the playback speed so that it has more of a gradient to it. Oh, so it's sped up and got to me in the end. Yeah, so this is kind of, if it's too slow, they might be able to run away, but um, having it kind of suddenly dart can be a bit jarring. So. Um, having it slow at the start, but if they manage to run away, it will get faster and catch up with them. Uh, it's kind of the ideal uh, situation for that. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Go to patreon.com/tapgiles to learn something new every day.